Mr. Chairman, this legislation reflects the input of members of Congress, of the flying public and stakeholders, to the tune of over 2,000 unique submissions that, that we processed, that we put together, and ultimately yield a bill that is in excess of 840 pages. This legislation is the result of hundreds of meetings, of dozens of hearings dating back years, and most importantly, Mr. Chairman, this legislation passed the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee with unanimous bipartisan support. This legislation takes important steps in ensuring that we have continuity and, and consistency within the FAA. It makes fundamental organizational changes, taking a 1970s organization and updating it for today. It, it establishes the assistant, excuse me, the deputy administrator for safety and operations, the assistant administrator for rulemaking and regulatory improvement. It establishes an office of innovation, an FAA ombudsman, and many other important important changes in the organizational structure of this antiquated and slow-moving agency. Mr. Chairman, this legislation is focused on the passenger experience. You, you can imagine these families traveling and, and going to satellite parking lots, taking shuttles to airports, trying to check in bags, trying to go through security, dealing with concessionaires at the airport, getting on the airplane and on the backside effectively doing it all over again at your destination airport. We've got to have someone that looks at this entire process to ensure that it's consistent, that it's complementary, that it's streamlined, and this bill does just that. Improving upon that passenger experience, ensuring that we're deploying the best technology, uh, the, the most updated technology as quickly as possible, pulling back the veil on air traffic control and other operations that often result in a negative or adverse passenger experience. Mr. Chairman, this legislation addresses many of the very concerns that we hear from the flying public. We have areas where we have shortages in personnel on the government side, on the private sector side, as the ranking member noted. We ensure that we incentivize uh, new entrants into this uh, growing workforce to make sure that we have the pilots, the air traffic controllers, the A&P mechanics, those that are operating new entrants into the market to ensure that that customer experience is positive. Mr. Chairman, this legislation also takes significant advances in an area where uh, I care a lot about, in, in, in new entrance into market. This, AV, this uh, FAA was really established or set up for a scenario when you had a few airplanes a week that were coming off of assembly lines. Now we're facing a scenario where you're going to have thousands and thousands of unmanned systems that are coming out on a weekly basis. We have to make sure that our regulatory, that our statutory environment is one that actually facilitates these new entrants into market. Title VII facilitates these new technologies. Everything from allowing for drones to be used for delivery, making decisions on beyond visual line of sight, ensures that we're operating in a risk-based framework for safety. It um, codifies the Part 107 waiver process to ensure that we're standardizing the waiver process and provides transparency. It uh, uh, ensures the designation of critical infrastructure related to, to drones, something that should have been done I want to remind my FAA friends in 2016 and establishes a mandate for that action. It, it, it helps to streamline the environmental process. Uh, it clarifies and, and eliminates burdensome rules regarding the, the, the delivery of certain products. It allows for unmanned systems to be used for wildfires, and it, it, uh, it includes the DIG Act for infrastructure inspections. In the advanced air mobility space, it, it, it creates certainty for eVTOL, electric vertical and takeoff equipment. It, it ensures that the process, the notice of proposed rulemaking that's going through is completed and provides certainty moving forward. Mr. Chairman, I'm not gonna go, everything, go through everything in this 841-page bill. But I do want to make note that the leader of this bill, the leader of this committee, Sam Graves, is the most knowledgeable aviation, aviation expert that has ever led this committee. And his hand was involved in every page of this legislation. We would not have this great bill without his leadership, without the leadership of our ranking member, Lick, 
<laughs> Rick Larson that uh, uh, represents large manufacturing and innovation community. Uh, our ranking member, Steve Cohen, that represents one of the largest cargo logistics hubs in the world. And I've flown before. Um, so I want to I want to thank all of the, the leaders of the committee. I also want to give a shout out uh, to all the staff. And I'll go through and name them in, in a little while. Gentlemen's, but uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I urge adoption of this bill and yield back. 